What's happening? This is Evan Don, and welcome to another episode of Beats for Breakfast. I know it's been a very long time. It's been about, what, three weeks, close to a month since you guys saw me. I do apologize for the disappearance. It's just I wanted to reformat how I'm doing Beats for Breakfast, and I'm just so thankful that my good brother right here, I'm glad that it's right this time, on the left of me, he is was very patient with me especially with just how the world is today and i'm just thankful so without any further ado please welcome mr carl rocco carl what you what's doing, going man? on everybody how you doing Avedon? thanks for having me brother thank you so much for coming on i really do appreciate you oh, um sure before now i've known you i've known you for about i want to say good about good to yeah, I would say about two years because since 2018 yeah. we we met and yeah. we've we we've already kind of like shared um, the the similarity of being, both being from New York City and then moving away from New York. So sure. for the people who don't know you, who is Carl Rocco? Oh, Carl Rocco is a lifelong gamer from the you know projects in you know queens new york i uh, used to hang out in ravenswood projects which is in astoria queens which is you know between the border of long island city and astoria mm -hmm. um, right over there is uh, a few minutes few minutes away from my projects were the uh queensbridge projects and for those of you who don't know uh, a lot of good rappers came out of queensbridge you know nas and some basketball players you got ron artest uh, who uh, came out of there went to st. John's so that's that's pretty much where you know I come from and you know as far as gaming is concerned I've been gaming since I was in diapers man it's um, you know you hear a lot of people say that but um, when I was two years old I, I kind of told this story on another uh, segment but uh, I want to go into a little little bit more detail so gaming for me started at two years old and um, you know, it started with the Coleco Vision, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, a lot of people, you know, can't remember what they had for breakfast, but for me, I that that's the same case. But when it comes to video games, I remember it like the back of my hand. You know, I was I'm I'm in my uncle's room playing with the GI Joes. You know, the little six-inch figures that had the rubber band on. You know, inside, and if they broke, you know, you had to get a new rubber band. Otherwise, you had a legless Joe, and um. You know, good times, good times, and obviously the Star Wars figures too, uh, which were made in the same way. Um, I was breaking out all of them, you know, pulling the legs out, breaking the rubber bands, and uh, you know, at, at some point that's my grandfather. Only, just, that's the only way to do it, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my grandfather took me from where I was and told my uncle, "Get in the room," and put me on his lap, and there it was, the Coleco Vision. Played a bunch of different games, but the one that stuck out to me the most was the Smurfs. That was actually the very first game that I played. Um, so it was a really... You, you're looking at it now, it's a really ugly looking thing. You know, it, I mean, you're talking 30 years ago. Um, that, that's but essentially who I am. Uh, I'm a gamer first. I'm a father of five children, ages 16, 10, 7, f 5... <laughs> And one, I think there may be one too out there. I'm, I don't. I'm, I'm, gl <laughs> I'm glad. Listen, 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 man. I'm glad you didn't mess up and mess up with the age. Was close. Was close. Because <laughs> your, 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 your kids saw this. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. You and I have heard the end of it. It's it's definitely dope. You know, hearing you know your background and you know just growing up on that side of Queens, on, on around the side of Queensbridge. You know, you mentioned. You know, artists such as Nas came from there, and then even just from Queens itself. You know, yep. you have people like Ja Rule, you have Fifty Cent, ja Rule, yep. you had quite a few people come from. And my, and my personal favorite, uh, honestly, from uh, Brooklyn, uh, B.I.G. So you know, for for me, when it comes to you know an artist like B.I.G., I, a lot of people will say the greatest rapper or the greatest hip hop artist. You know. When, when you listen to B.I.G., it's the same thing with Tupac. Tupac is, like, tied for number one with B.I.G. Because every, you know, it just depends on the song that you're listening to. Because at the end of the day, they're not rappers and they're not hip-hop artists. They're storytellers. They're poets. They're prophets. And, you know, especially Tupac with a lot of the things that he used to say. It's all still relevant today. Especially today. So, um, you know, it, it's just to know where you come from is very important. 
So I was going to ask you this later on, but I feel like it's more fitting to action this now. So being yeah. a New York native, how has your taste of music been impacted living in Hawaii? Almost non-existent, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to and I'm going to say this because, you know, every country has its own style of music mm -hmm. and um, Hawaii certainly has, you know, a few songs that, you know, get my head bop into the beat a little bit. But, you know, I'm always turning on that B.I.G. track or that Rage Against the Machine track or, you know, listen to a little bit of Slipknot. For those of you guys who don't know, I listen to everything. I even have Rascal Flats on my phone. Um, mostly because of that movie Cars. Uh, it has Life as a Highway on there, and my daughters, they make me download every, you know, important Disney track. But, you know, it, it kind of snowballed from there. So there's a couple of country songs that I can't really think of right now, but they're on my phone. And, you know, just everything from hip hop to R&B to rock to hard rock to heavy metal, I listen to it. It doesn't even matter. Is nothing wrong with having an eclectic ear. There's oh, for sure. Nothing wrong with it because when you have an eclectic ear, it's like you could literally appreciate different sides of music that a lot of people necessarily won't mm -hmm. get. Um, let's say, for instance, 100%. let's say, for instance, um, we go into jazz. You won't, you will appreciate some old, older Nas samples when you hear the Miles Davis, the original Miles Davis tracks, the original John Coltrane tracks that was sampled yeah. for some of these songs. So I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. Oh, yeah. And it, and to kind of piggyback on that point, you know, it's important to understand. And the one the one that comes to mind and you're probably going to shake your head on this one. I like I, I like that song Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. <laughs> OK, so when I first heard that, that whole din 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 ding ding i'm like i asked my mother i'm like where does that come from it sounds familiar and then she's like here listen to this and i'm like under pressure vanilla ice queen they they sound the same and we all know what happened with that but mm -hmm. i think it's important that if you're gonna listen to a remade track or a uh, sample track you should always listen to the original because you never know you might like that one too you I'm may even you may even open your ears to you know a whole catalog of music at the same time absolutely i mean one of the i would say one of the greatest sample flips of all time in my opinion was when um jay-z flipped the annie sample and flipped that into hard knock life <laughs> yeah. and it's like it you created something that was made for a different demographic and related it to your own and with a lot of people who lived you know in that lifestyle sure could really relate to so music was was it's like like you yourself it's like i've been a gamer and music just basically a gamer gamer all my life but i just mm. been loving music as long as i can remember but um oh, music is amazing it, it's it just it all depends on the situation but you know like gaming and music they essentially do the same thing where like for, like we, for me gaming you know it's it's more of a therapeutic thing so if i'm feeling down i'll sit there and i'll just dive into a game you know like i, I was telling you off camera mm -hmm. i played pokemon moon for, and i spent 30 hours in it and that was in the span of the last couple of days wow. and then and then with music you know if i'm if i'm on the way home from jujitsu practice or just simply driving and i'm getting ready to park the car and a good song's coming on i'll just sit there and close my eyes and just try to you know get really in tune with what the words are actually meaning and then just try to picture that story a little bit further i mean it's 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 really all good stuff it's an escape it's therapeutic it's amazing basically i want to even um take further even ask you like what are some of the songs that you like listening to that really get you in the zone when you're training well it's very cliche but eye of the tiger um, it's, it's a that's a one. dope song. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a good one, you know. Uh, I, uh, Sky's the limit by you know. Um, I do like um, the city's mine by Jay Z, uh, you know. And then when it comes to just Queen, believe it or not, some people will listen to Bohemian Rhapsody. I do like Under Pressure because I'm not very good at jujitsu, and I'm I'm constantly constantly under pressure. So it it's listening to songs that you know touch on the fears that i have or the ambition that i have so it just really depends so with those songs and then there's another one that i like 
um, to ch- to kind of bring out the anger or not well not necessarily the anger, but get the um, endorphins going and get the adrenaline going. So like the Devil and I by Slipknot is another one I listen to. Um, but yeah, dude, that's they're in a loop. Every song is in a loop. Life is a highway. The songs I mentioned. Um, let's see, what's another good one that I like? Uh, honestly. Yeah, that's, I would say that's pretty much it because I try to keep my workout in general to about 30 to 40 minutes. So those tracks would be the ones that are on my gym playlist. But I have hundreds more. Got you, got you, got you. Um, I would say it's funny you said that. Like I haven't listened to them in a while, but back when I used to like go to the gym, I don't go to the gym, I just do a lot of home workouts now. Sure. And I listen, I listen to my... Uh, mostly my own tracks, maybe because I'm trying to see what I what I can do to fix. But when I used to listen to Queen, "Princes of the Universe" was one of the songs that would mm-hmm. um, would push me to go forward like harder in the gym. So I remember that song. But um, I'm curious to know is like what is a song that people will be surprised to know that you really like? Ooh, ooh, ooh man, um, there's a few. Um... There's this one by Celine Dion. It was my mother and father's um, wedding song. Oh, wow. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But uh, I, want, I want to say, dang, I can't remember the name of it. But it what it, it's um it, it kind of goes. You were my strength when I was weak. That was that's the old song. Hold up. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an I've, old song. That is an old song. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that because yeah. it's like. I grew up in a house like listening to different like yeah. a lot of different music so it's like I've heard that I need to think I can't look for it right now because when we get off when yeah. we take our break I'm, I'm actually gonna go look yeah for look it. yeah definitely look for that but um I I come when I when I listen to that song I don't necessarily think of a husband and a wife I think of a father and a daughter or a son and a you know mother that sort of thing so I have three girls so so yeah I like to instill values into my kids um, you know when one person is down you know if you're in a position of power you need to be able to bring that person up you know for example uh, the other day I was going to get breakfast and I had my 10 year old daughter with me um, and we were going to buy breakfast this lady came in and she was clearly flustered she I'm, I'm assuming she had the money to pay for breakfast but you know the the restaurant owner brought me in even though that lady was there first and she came in saying, hey, this is what I wanted. I was here first. I even told the lady that she was here first. Um, but I paid for the woman's breakfast. So it's important to, you know, keep, you know, have songs that you really like that remind you of who you are in terms of what you experienced and whatever your ambitions are. And then as far as like an off the wall sort of you wouldn't guess that I like this type of music, um, Asian Kung Fu Generations Renai Spirits is a good song um i speak very little japanese but this song kind of resonates with me and when you if when you listen to music like anybody can hear it but if you listen to the music you'll see what i mean by when i say my soul connects to the words regardless of how much of it i actually understand um for some odd reason um it's 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 spelled r e n AI spirits they're the same group that does the um, songs for the Naruto anime oh yeah so I got into them by listening to one of the uh, I think it was rewrite which was one of the old Naruto intros wow okay that's interesting because I've I think one of my favorite Naruto songs out of the whole entire series well the the original series was Mm -hmm. Hinata versus Neji like mm. there was a song that played when they were fighting for the first time and when i first heard that and the reason why i messed with that is because my homeboy who got me into making beats he sampled that and i heard that over a hip-hop beat i'm like yo what is this and brings us full circle <laughs> back to what we just talking about when yeah, you hear yeah, exactly. the same it's like you want to listen to all the music and then I found out the Naruto soundtrack is absolutely bonkers. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's amazing. So, absolutely. 
But um, everybody, we're going to go ahead and take our first break. Well, actually, only one break. I'm so used to saying first break. We're going to take our break for, for this. <laughs> uh, stay tuned for some of Carl Rockle's worth. And also, stay tuned for more to come. Stay tuned. Japanese emulation wizard Hamster has revealed during its Nico Nico livestream that it is in fact adding two additional arcade archive titles over to the Nintendo Switch. The titles in question are in fact Super Punch Out, which is the sequel to the original, as well as Versus Baseball. Both arcade games coming out in 1984. This is actually a welcome surprise considering that the Nintendo Switch does not have a virtual console and has to rely on developers or emulation experts such as Hamster to bring classic games over to the Nintendo Switch. However, outside of introducing new characters that were later brought over to the Super Nintendo version of Super Punch-Out, the arcade version of this particular game is not that drastic in terms of gameplay changes. In fact, it is largely the same. I am going to assume that the way you view the screen is going to be entirely up to you, whether you have the fight card on one side and the gameplay on the other, or the fight card above and the gameplay below, or vice versa. It really is just going to pend on your preference and style of play. For me personally, uh, I like to have it looking more like the arcade, so I'll have the fight card above and the gameplay below. But I'm actually curious to know what you guys think about this announcement. Are you excited for these retro games coming over to the Nintendo Switch? If so, which one are you going to pick up? Or are you going to pick up both? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that commercial break. Um, this this has been a trying time here over in the states, and I'm sure those of you across all over the world know what's going on. You know, with the racial tensions that are going on, and being a gamer YouTuber during this time is difficult because a lot of people look for gaming as a as a place where you know you want that escape so when you go to your gaming youtubers you're still desiring that escape you don't want to be fed you know what's going on in the world you're not looking for those content creators to do that you're looking for them to keep you entertained so i wanted to ask you carl when the world is literally burning do you find it hard to be brand friendly yes um and let me tell you why uh, mainly because you know, as a as a YouTuber, if you have a certain shtick, you want to stick to it as much as you can because that's what your audience tunes into. Mm -hmm. And whether you have 380 subscribers or a million subscribers, it makes no difference. You have a brand, you need to stick with it. And what makes it really difficult is you want to speak on the issue. And when people come to YouTube, they don't necessarily want to hear about the drama when they got to deal with it outside of YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I totally get that. And that's why I haven't done any content in a week because th th these situations have hit me on a mental level, a physical level and a spiritual level. You know, we live in a world where we want peace, but yet we accept war. We live in a world where we want change but we constantly favor those who won't give it to us and it, it's really frustrating because as as i'm going to just say it like it is as a white man it bothers me that my black brothers and sisters are hurting um you know when, when i see them hurting i hurt because at the end of the day my personal belief is that all lives matter and this is not a knock on any other you know ethnic group i believe that it matters however when you have the black community the native american community and any other community that feels like they've been oppressed or have been oppressed and in this case the black community which is clearly clearly being oppressed how can all lives matter 
it 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 actually does all lives do not matter if a, one particular group you know is completely under scrutiny and attacked almost every single day that they're on the earth it, it's it, it's unfathomable absolutely and absolutely and it's like it gets it gets to a point where it's almost like it makes it makes you want to really just reevaluate you know how you want to do things you know as a content creator myself it it made me want to just take a few steps back and you know just have more inward talk so if you know with my community you know talk with them more and just just be a more of a listening ear in these topics because everybody's emotions well not, i'm not gonna say everybody many people's emotions were high and it's like you know there are some things that may not agree with pe- people in terms of small different things you know there i've had voiced different things to people that i don't agree with everything that this that this movement's for or i don't agree with how these terms are said i can have that some those conversations with some people but then yeah. there's other people it's like you can't have that conversation with i had to pull i had to pull friends aside i'm like you guys have to understand what you're saying even though you're fighting for the same cause you could be super insensitive for the people who are experiencing some of these things live on ground right now i and i and i told people i said you know you want to talk about privilege Yo, we have the privilege to tweet about how angry we are. There are mm. so many people who have to live through it, and that hits different. And, you know, you could say, oh, it's just a corporate building. You know, let's just, and I'm not talking about, I'm not trying to bring up any areas. Let's just say it's a corporate, it's a corporate building, right? Let's just say those people who wake up the next day had to go there. Let's say for the people who had jobs there, what did they what 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 did they have to do? You're looking at these people who had who had jobs. Now they don't have jobs anymore. Guess what? Yep. Their mortgage company don't care. Quicken Loans, Dover Mule. No, Chase, they don't care. They don't, <laughs> no, they, don't, they don't. They don't care that you that you they'll offer you a forbearance. But guess what? that bill is going to add up and add up and add up yes it will so you still have a light bill that needs to be paid you still have a cell phone bill that needs to be paid you still have a cable bill that needs that still needs to be paid so Mm -hmm. it's like for me to say it was just this and not thinking about the the loss of resources that was needed for that community the loss of jobs for the people who worked in that building is it's it's troubling so it's like I'm just offering a perspective from the other side of it and just being a game, just to bring this back into full circle, being a gaming YouTuber, I'll be real with you. I don't care about the gaming news that much when real news is happening and real stuff is happening in the world. Like there was people showing almost getting upset about the the PlayStation five event being being delayed. And I just unfollowed them. I was like, nope, unfollow, unfollow. Unfollow. I don't understand how you can even like you were willing to accept the you know games being delayed because of a virus that was affecting everybody anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you're, but you're not going to be you know accepting toward a moral situation that is also affecting everybody. It is. So it, it's it's absolutely hypocritical and nonsensical, honestly. It is. And that's why, you know, I, you know, thank you, you know, even for speaking out because it's almost like it, it bothers, you know, so many different people. And that's why what I try to do, you know, because I have a, I have a diverse community. And because of that, I, I welcome conversations for them to have these conversations among each other, because to me, I feel it's healthy. If we are a community of gamers, Mm -hmm we should be able to talk about these things in a, in a mature fashion 100 percent. and and you know to your point i mean you can't you can't have change unless you're willing to have those discussions mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you're never going to be able to understand someone if you're not talking mm-hmm. and that's why it's like for me amongst like other personal stuff 
I just felt super burnt out this week. And it, it was it was a little troubling to deal with, but I bounced back. But I wanted to make this valuable for the listeners here because I do thank you guys for watching. So I want you, you all who are watching to gain something from this. So, Carl, I want you because you took a few breaks from YouTube. How do you deal with burnout? Well, it, some people deal with it, you know, however they deal with it. Me, personally, when I was first doing YouTube, I tried to do a little bit of everything. You know, just kind of take a wet piece of toilet paper, throw it on the wall, see if it sticks. That's sort of <laughs> it. Um, so I got burnt out just with that. And then I found that, you know, I wasn't really loving it the way, you know, guys like you or you know, RGT85 or Player Essence, you know, enjoy it. So I said, you know what, I got to stop and focus on my gaming career because I'll never be successful with it if I don't. Um, long story short, I mean, I, you're the first person I reached out to when I was considering coming back. And, you know, I was still burnt out when I, you know, meant talk to you, when I reached out to you. And um, I was dealing with it in a sense where it's more of a reflection period. And... Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, if I'm going to do this, this, how, how am I going to do it? Why am I going to do it? You know, what am I going to have? What am I not going to have? And if I couldn't answer the questions that I had for myself, how could I, how could I actually entertain the audience that I'm seeking? It made no sense. So obviously when I came back to avoid burnout, I wanted to focus, my passion is talking about games. It's not necessarily... I love playing games. I mean, why, why? we wouldn't be here if we didn't love playing games. But the landscape of YouTube changed so much. So not a lot of people who are already established in Let's Plays, they're fine. But if you're looking to establish an audience with just Let's Plays, it's so hard unless you're throwing your controller across the room like some multicolor-haired celebrities. Um, <laughs> you know... It, so it's, oh, it's just not possible. So I look to guys like Spawn Wave, you know, you, Abaddon Smith, Player Essence. I said, what can I want to do what they're doing, but I want to do it in a way that isn't going to burn me out because what you may enjoy and how you enjoy doing it may be different from my threshold. So I started off with... Um, this is how I manage my burnout. Just want to keep everybody, you know, in line with that. I just try little things here and there according to the way I'm processing them. So, for example, instead of taking a wet tissue paper or toilet paper and throwing it on the wall to see if it sticks, do what you're passionate about. So I was passionate about talking about games. So I took the quartering approach. For those of you who don't know, there's a YouTuber named The Quartering very good in terms of pop culture coverage you know news there not not to give a shout out or anything but shout outs he you know he's a good guy um he he reads articles you know live on youtube and gives his own perspective so i started taking that approach because i wanted to manage my burnout mm -hmm. you know i didn't want to get burnt out and then it evolved into well i want to include gameplay in my videos and I want to give my own perspective, even if I'm covering the article that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So it evolved from reading the articles to, you know, writing a small script and including gameplay and covering the news the way that I do it now. Um, so it's important that when you are burnt out and you want to continue doing what you're doing that got you burnt out in the first place, you have to take a step by step approach. Um, when, when I when I came back to YouTube, I actually did let's play i have a let's play series called delayed gamer um which i'm ending by the way i'm just waiting on some this video game that i ordered from gamestop to to arrive in the mail um i wanted to just kind of do let's plays to get myself comfortable and keep myself on a consistent schedule but kate kate, kate case in point let's plays aren't popular anymore unless you are already established so the next this game that I'm going to be doing, it's the last Let's Play I'm ever going to do. Um, not because I don't enjoy playing video games. I have a Twitch channel for that. But I actually enjoy talking about the news. When, when I watch you talk about... When, when you were, when you do the news, I, I listen to you. When 
when spawn wave does it i'm like see i knew it you know and it's like i said it's a step-by-step -step process so not only do you have to be passionate about what you're doing you have to present yourself in a way that most people who don't know you will perceive so i like to tell people that know me know that i'm knowledgeable about video games but so far i feel like i haven't exuberated that yet I which could, i could see that in some of your videos actually yeah it, it it bothers me to no end and i don't worry about it i don't worry about getting a million subscribers or 10 million subscribers um i do my videos because i'm finding myself Absolutely. and when, when i get to that point my burnout will officially be over am i burned out now yes am i burned out because of youtube sort of but you know what i actually enjoy what i'm doing the the situation with the world and you know not to go back to that subject but the situation with the world was like you know what let me take a break for this week tell everybody on twitter what's going down and just relax because even if you know even pewdiepie took a break so you get it. there's yeah so there's there's no reason why you can't take a break if your audience enjoys your content they'll be there when you get back that's the main thing just understand that if they enjoy your content they will be there and you know the one thing i stress to anybody who's considered doing a youtube channel um if you have let's say 10,000 subscribers don't worry about all 10,000 people watching your videos don't worry about all 10,000 people liking your videos or disliking your videos or commenting on your videos and i say this because you have you have a group of people that watch your certain you know watch your videos depending on the topic they'll watch them sometimes they'll watch it for a little bit and then they'll shut it off but more or less you're not doing the videos for them they're going to enjoy them regardless or not enjoy them you're doing them for you you have to pick what you're passionate about and you have to do it and as, as to kind of wrap this part up you know I'm trying to showcase my knowledge in games. It's a little bit difficult, but when you overcome that barrier of worrying about how many subs or how many likes or how many views, and you just do what you're passionate about, everything is gonna fall into place, whether it's your knowledge on the industry or your taste for music. It doesn't, it's, it, People will follow who they feel are truly, genuinely passionate about what they do. It's kind of like being a teacher for the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. A student will not cling to a teacher that is not passionate about what they're teaching. So, and, and I know we can all relate to that to yeah, some degree. Definitely. So that's kind of how you have to approach burnout in terms of YouTube, especially with the current climate. Um, just make sure you follow just if you feel like you if you feel like you're being burnt out take a step back however long you need and when you're getting ready to come back take it step by step you know do a two shows if you're good with two shows do three shows if you feel like three shows is good stick to three shows if you can do a fourth do a fourth if you can only do one do one but the main thing is do it step by step show you're passionate and just keep doing what you're doing and eventually everything will fall into place definitely that was good that was real good um i do appreciate you sharing that there was so many points that you hit that are actual real facts and things that i even had to do and just to pinpoint it's when you say one relax i'll just say the one step i'll just say right before that first acknowledge you are what you did yourself acknowledge that you're burnt out i think that's the first prerequisite step a lot of people will just keep working and yes you can still work well you can put out really good content even when you're burnt out but at the same time you don't realize you're burnt out until you really study the symptoms of what burnout means absolutely and i realized that myself and what i decided to do during you know my burnout phase in my period was in that was i wanted to change everything about myself i changed my work schedule i ch change i'm even changing the content i'm going to even be putting on youtube because in order to not get burnt out to like you say you need to do what you're passionate about 
and nine times out of ten gaming youtubers this is not a shot this is just an observation a lot of gaming youtubers don't have the self-awareness to know that you like playing video games more you like talking about them and, I, I can see that <laughs> and that is something that that is something that I feel as though you need the self-awareness of that you like playing the games more than talking about them yep. and I, I came to that I'm, you know what and you know what just so anyone knows another shot I'm gonna raise my hand first and I called myself on that which is why you guys have not seen a news <laughs> video from me because I like playing the games more than talking about it and I just know that out of all the gaming YouTubers there are which is there are thousands probably way more than that of gaming YouTubers that are out there that is that is a trait so it's almost like when you are when you are doing gaming news you have to really look at yourself in the sense of i'm not gaming news, but you're doing gaming content you got to look at yourself in the sense how can i put myself out in the best light doing something that has something to do with video games but that i'm passionate about and that's why i'm going back to fusing music and gaming because that's something that I believe that I can do. That is a lane that I feel like I can create for myself. And that's like yes. the biggest thing. You need to create a lane for yourself. And you touched on a few things for yourself. I would say just keep, I would say don't stop throwing, you know, you know, the wet tissue in the wall, seeing feels sick. Don't, don't stop any of that. Start like keep doing that and seeing what is for you. You know, look at you know, look at yourself when it comes to gaming. Look at I actually agree do. with that. I actually agree with that. You know, just don't throw as many wet tissue papers yes. as you can. Yeah, because then they'll all fall eventually. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I would yeah. say keep keep experimenting, keep, you know, finding out about yourself. Cause the thing is if you're a progressive human being, you're always growing, your interests change all the time. So where yep. you are now may not be where you are in the next two years, but there is some there are things that carry along with us for lifetimes. Me gaming lifetime so far. Music lifetime so far. And I just said, if I could do the two things at the same time, that may be something that I would want to do as lifetime as well. So you kind of awesome. you kind of just got to find your own lane with that. But I don't want to keep, you know, you here for too long. I really do appreciate you taking the time for sure. this interview. Um, we had a great talk um, during the break as well, which yeah, I, I would definitely I would definitely say, you know, if you're not following Carl Rocco, please do. Uh, this man I does. That, man. This man has a, a great heart. And I, I like where he's going. He's trying his best with his content. Um, he definitely has a news channel. He definitely uh, updates you on the, on the news, and as well on Twitch, he has um, more of a more of a live stream channel. We live streams and playing video games. So make sure you guys go check yes, him sir. out. And Thank you. Carl, do you have anything? Any last words you want to say? I usually, actually, no. I'm going to ask you a question that I traditionally <laughs> ask a lot of people, and I'm going to go ask ahead. you the same. I'm going to ask you the same question. If you could give yourself. Your younger self, I would say 10 years ago, self advice. What advice would you give yourself? I would give myself the uh, advice that I give my children, uh, particularly my seven year old daughter who wants to be a pro fighter and nothing else. Um, it's good to have a plan A, but you're not going to get to your plan A without a plan B. And what that means is let's say you want to be a professional fighter or you want to be a life or you want to have a career on YouTube you have to have a fallback plan so what I would tell my younger self is follow your dreams but make sure you have something practical lined up in case your dreams actually fall through and that's key because you know in the case of my daughter um, you know a fighter's life is very short and in some cases, you have fighters who are good enough to be pro, but don't get there because they get injured and then they have nothing else. So just make sure that you have a plan B um, and make sure your plan B is in line with your plan A. So, for example, I want to be a rock star, but you're not going to be a rock star. You're going to be a music teacher. Mm. Just think about that. For a I like so, that. Yeah, you got to you have to 
make sure that your plan A and your plan B are one in the same, but one is one's practical and one is far out there. It's attainable, but it's far out there because not everybody can be the next Jay Z, and not everybody can be the next um, you know Rascal Flats. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you all for watching. If you guys Absolutely. enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe sure you button. Hit that like button. And most of all, most of all, you. Yes, you, because it's been such a long time since I said this. You make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avedon, and I'm out. Peace, y'all. Right. Peace. Take care. Wait, let's free back. Actually, no, no. No, no, we're gonna run that back. You see, it's been such okay. a long time since I did some beats for breakfast. <laughs> I thought I'm doing the Avadon Smith channel, not the Beats for Breakfast channel. So we're gonna run that back. See, oh man. And this is almost unedited, so you guys are seeing all of this. Oh man, don't you guys just love the love right now? I bet y'all y'all laughing right now. So once again, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with Fred. This is Avedon and Carl Rocco, and we are out. Peace, y'all.